Ideogram is the brand new AI art generator on the block. In this video, I'm going to put Ideogram, Dali, and Midjourney to the test through a number of challenges to see which is the AI art generator to rule them all, or which one is best in your different situation. And we're going to look firstly at the features before moving on to a prompt battle. We'll put the same prompt into each of these AI art generators, and then we'll evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the images that come out. Next up is speed. Well, we'll have a little prompt race, and we'll see how long it takes to generate an image in each of these platforms. Next up is pricing, where we'll take a look at how much it costs to make the use of each one of these softwares. Finally, we'll have a little discussion about the community, the resolution, and the limitations that each of these has. That's where we talk about NSFW. There's nothing like spending hours at your laptop crafting the most beautiful, godly, shapely boobies. So ladies and gentlemen, I've put on a shirt today, so we're really talking business. Now it's time to dive in and explore which is the best AI art generator together. On the announcements page of Ideogram, they've shared a rather intriguing graph showcasing some research that they have performed rating their platform against both Dali and Midjourney. And here you can see that they say, using an evaluation protocol, we find that human raters prefer Ideogram 1 over Dali 3 and Midjourney V6 in prompt alignment, image coherence, overall preference, and text rendering quality. So it's saying here that it smashes both Dali and Midjourney on prompt alignment, which is prompt adherence, making sure that what you get out is what you put in, image coherence, which is essentially how much sense the image makes if people have extra limbs, eyes, teeth, or hands, fingers, toes, and overall preference, which is essentially how much do you enjoy the aesthetic taste of the image, and text rendering quality, which is how much the AI art generator is able to accurately recreate the text that you have asked for. And it even looks as if that it was a closer run race against Dali than against Midjourney, which surprises me. I mean, especially I would say on the overall preference metric, I'm very shocked that number one, that Dali outperformed Midjourney on this metric, and number two, that it was not a lot closer. Some dodgy polling going on there, I'd say. It's like those Russian polls that come out and say, Putin with 99.9% .9 of the vote. Yeah, I, I believe that. And also looking at this data, we can see that where Ideogram is really stepping out in front of these other two is on the text rendering capabilities. And this is particularly interesting because it opens up an avenue for incredible graphic design work. So you can really start to uh, create work such as posters, apps, website designs inside of an AI art generator. Just look at some of these designs coming out of Ideogram. The text is coherent, the spelling is correct, each of the characters is rendered accurately and coherently. And it opens up a whole world of possibilities for design. But I was curious to run a little poll on my channel and see which is the favorite AI art generator. And... Midjourney came out way ahead with 60% of the vote, followed by Stable Diffusion, and then Dali and Leonardo uh, coming up lower down. So we'll have a little chat about the features and the user experience of these platforms. Firstly, Dali is best run inside of ChatGPT, and this gives it its own unique flavor that you can essentially have a conversation with ChatGPT about creating images. This is both an advantage and a drawback. What's good is that you can actually ask ChatGPT for its opinion on the works that you are creating and work with it in a conversational manner. You can say, okay, make it more bright, make it more futuristic. And it can update using this conversational language, which is uh, quite a usable way to interact with an AI art generator. However, it's extremely difficult to fine tune the algorithm, to uh, adjust the settings and parameters inside your works. Now, Midjourney is uh, currently working both in a Discord channel version and they're building out their own website where you can create as well. Now, Midjourney has an interesting blend of uh, being both usable in a simple way where you can simply enter a prompt and get out very beautiful images that uh, work very well 
with little understanding of both visual taste or prompt engineering. And it also offers uh, more advanced users the capabilities to adjust and fine tune the algorithm in different ways. For example, you can create consistent styles. You can add in different parameters which adjust how the algorithm works. This includes how much it adheres to your prompt, how much of its own stylistic intent it adds, and much, much more. So it has a nice uh, entry point where it's quite easy to pick up and start off. And then there is a lot to learn if you go further down that rabbit hole. Now, I would say also Midjourney has a very good library of collecting your images. So it's easy to navigate through all of the works that you have created. You can put these into folders, you can filter them, and you can search for them in this uh, very elegant and organized way. And if we have a look at Ideogram, Ideogram is running in the browser and it has its own site. Uh, it has a fairly decent uh, library management system and the prompting window uh, works fairly well. However, I would say that I would like to see a full screen prompting experience. It's quite unusual to have this very small modal window where you have to select all of the different elements for your work. So let's move on to a prompt battle. And this is where I've put in the same prompt to each of these AI art generators. And I've collected these so we can compare them. Now, we're gonna run through a few different styles and mediums, and we're gonna look for which ones are working well and who wins on each round. So first up, we have animal photography. And the prompt for this is a joyful dog riding a surfboard, catching a wave. <laughs> So I won't read out all of the prompts. I will give you a little idea of what the prompt is. But if you are interested in seeing whole prompts and also looking at these images yourself more closely, I'll leave a link to this document in the description below. So now you've seen the prompt, I will show you three images. And I'm actually gonna ask you to have a think about which one you like the most and how they compare without knowing which is from which AI art generator yet. This is to prevent any bias because we might have developed some sort of love and affiliation with a software and its purpose in the world. Long live! Which is highly possible because art can stir great motivations in the heart, great dependencies on the philosophy and notion of what type of world we want to live in. Is it a world envisaged by Dali, Midjourney or Ideogram? Ideogram, ideogram, ideogram. So here are the three images. Do you prefer doggo number one, doggo number two, or doggo number three? Make your choice now. So I can tell you that doggo number one was from Dali, doggo number two was from Midjourney, and doggo number three is from the new player in the game, ideogram. Now, I also asked this as a poll on my channel. So let's take a look at the results. Doggo number two came out way ahead with 57% of the vote. Next up was doggo number three, which is from Ideogram. And finally, it was Dali. So in this public vote, we had a preference for Midjourney and then for Ideogram and finally for Dali. But Midjourney really dominated the vote. So my choice, it's certainly Midjourney and Ideogram stand out above Dali. I quite enjoy the ears coming up from the ideogram version it gives it a slightly humorous depiction of this dog but i'm not sure if that's physically possible that in this moment it looks like as if his momentum is coming down and so it's unusual that his ears are flopping up at this time there is a yeah, beautiful balance and composition of this piece i like the way that it uh, really leads you into the center of the image that there are these shapes that really point and direct us to the focal point of the image, which is the dog on the surfboard. So the leading lines work very well. And it has a nice balance of colors. I would say the expression of the dog looks a little bit gormless. Maybe I would prefer it if he was uh, looking more directly into the camera or there was a little bit more life in his eyes. And the other point I would like to mention is the surfboard seems a little bit small, especially the rear end. And we can also look at an element of physics here it looks as if the, the beach is very shallow here, that the water is very close to the seafloor, and it looks like as if he's on a huge wave, so perhaps that doesn't make a lot of sense. But overall, I am quite keen on this image, and I think realistically it looks very good. It's been rendered effectively, the prompt adherence is there, and the image coherence. 
So if we look into the mid-journey version, you can see that the it's got a very different approach. It's very interesting to see the contrast between how dynamic the ideogram image is compared to how calm and relaxed the mid-journey image is. Now, I prefer the more restricted color palette coming out of mid-journey here. You can see that it has uh, really dominant blues and then just these highlights of the dog in the middle, which are these more subtle uh, earthy oranges, which contrast very well to the blues. So it starts to look a little bit stylized with this very restricted color palette, but it's more visually pleasing to me. Perhaps it's slightly less realistic, but it's more artistic. It's almost as if a photographer had really curated the scene for the visual effect. It, it's more cinematically engaging. So I appreciate that about the mid-journey version. I also would say that I would probably prefer to have this dog in my life than this dog. <gasps> oh my God. Now, you can see that the surfboard is pretty tiny, but apart from that, the physics look fairly accurate. Let me know if you see anything in any of these images that I miss, any unusual elements that don't make sense, especially. And finally, we have the Dali image. And here you can see the classic effect of Dali, which is to really saturate everything and add in very high dynamic ranges. So the image has really intense highlights and very dark shadows. And also some, I would say, yeah, very intense elements. I find it to be like the sun is extremely overwhelming. It's almost the most dominant element in the whole piece. For me, it distracts a little bit from the subject matter to have this very intense sun, like this very harsh, intense light. So the lighting is often very harsh and intense in Dali, and it really comes across in this image. Though I do like the, the textures coming out of the water here and the reflections are very artistic, very abstract, and uh, I, I appreciate these, as well as the, the mist, the fine mist coming off of the wave actually is, it's, it's quite tactile. So let's put them all side by side to see how they compare. I notice my internal system gets most activated and irritated by the Ideogram and Dali versions. I find the mid-journey version more calming and soothing. I must say, I really appreciate the variety in the answers to the prompts, that each one of these has a very different approach. And yeah, it's really beautiful to see that we have these AI art generators that are actually taking their own direction. It would be very sad if they all came out with very similar Im images. So I would like to commend them all for at least attempting to develop their own uh, style and vision for an AI art generator. Now, let's move on to human photorealism. I think I'm always more impressed by an AI art generator's ability to recreate photorealistic depictions of life rather than surreal or abstract uh, painted mediums. And I think this really puts the AI art generators to the test. I think that for true application of this technology, we are going to be looking at how it's going to work with realistic situations. This is really where it's going to uh, be used the most and have the biggest impact on the largest amount of industries. So this is the photorealistic prompt that I used, a beautiful girl in a cafe looking directly into the frame, cinematic high detail, ultra realistic cinematic lighting shot on 50 millimeter lens, ultra wide angle, depth of field, hyper detailed, beautifully colored, coded, beautifully grown. So let's take a look at how these images compare. First up, we have ideogram. And what's interesting about this depiction is it has a slightly painted effect, a slightly stylized aesthetic. It almost looks like paint strokes coming off of the cabinet here. It's got a very clear central perspective leading us in through the image. You can see the lines are all drawing us very clearly into the image. You can see this line's coming up here. Yeah, so it's quite, I would say, a yeah, an intense perspective that they've applied onto this image, it feels a little bit overwhelming. It's like these shots from Alfred Hitchcock where they zoom in very intensely and accentuate the perspective around the character. So it almost has a horror film feeling to me. I would say this is elevated by the lacy outfit of this young girl. Though I would say anatomically, she looks fairly accurate. Perhaps this forearm is a little bit long. It looks as if this arm is a little bit longer than this arm. Let's just see if that's true. Yes, yeah, so it does look as if this forearm is at least 10 to 15% longer. So some slight deviations anatomically there. Now also her nose looks a little bit unusual to me. The middle part of the nose, what is that called? Christ, septum? 
I think it's called the septum. Let's roll with septum. You can see the septum is quite narrow, unusually so, and there's unbalanced about her mouth here. It's slightly heavier on the left side than on the right side. And there's also uh, an unusual watermark added in here that was not requested for Unreal. As for the color palette, I would say I, I quite like the these yeah, opaque, softer shades, these uh, these pinks and reds uh, are balancing out quite well. It's, uh, the visual balance of the colors is, is is very coherent here. I like the yeah the larger amount of this peach over here uh, being balanced out with the darker intense red. Perhaps it's a little bit distracting then actually on the subject. I would say that the eye is certainly drawn more to these bold colors rather than to the subject in the middle of the screen. Now let's move on to the mid journey version, and it's yeah it's a real contrast here. You can see that. The composition we have is much more closely zoomed in. It's got a very strong bokeh effect, which is a blurred background. And this, uh, yeah, it gives us a completely different feel from the previous image. It's uh, really uh, incredible how different the interpretation is. I really appreciate the freckles that have been added in. And if we look at the nose, the nose certainly is more realistic here. So anatomically, I cannot see anything that I would say is different from reality. I would like to pay particular attention to the detail of the individual strands of hair and how naturally they seem to fall on her face and shoulders. Maybe this hair here is the only one that seems a little bit unusual to me. Can you see any unusual hairs? Now just compare that to the hair of the first image and you can see that there are still individual strands coming through from Ideogram but it looks like a block doesn't look like a lifelike set of hairs. It looks more like an imitation of hair. Now, when we take a closer look at Dali, whoa! <laughs> Once again, Dali has this incredibly high contrast, overly saturated image. I wonder what happened in the training of Dali. It reminds me very much, if you see people who are just starting out in photography and they're posting things on Instagram, they have a tendency to add way too much clarity, contrast, and saturation when they're editing their images. And I think there is a uh, real potential for Dali if there is like a less saturated, lower contrast image. Perhaps my fear with Dali is that they created a beautiful AI art generator and then it was shown to a person in management who had the final say and said, oh, can we give it a bit more jazz? Like, why is this not got enough jazz? And then they're saying, okay, we can do this. And they're just offer a quick fix where they add this intense contrast and saturation. And he's like, I love it, I love it, it's amazing. Give it more jazz, more jazz. And then that was the model that was delivered to the public. So I did two things here. Firstly is I took the image from Dali and I manually adjusted some of the effects of it to reduce the contrast, the clarity, the saturation, and lower the highlights and raise the darks in the image. And for me, I would say that it certainly looks more, uh, one, realistic, and two, I would say I prefer the uh, the visual appeal of it. Now, I also asked Dali to do this itself, and it came out with this version, which I would say is a vast improvement. So when you're working with Dali, it really helps to tell it that you don't know what your, you don't know what taste is. I'm in charge here, and you're gonna listen to me. I don't want none of your damn high contrast. And if we take a look at all these images together, we can, see how we feel about them. I would say that for me, for some reason, the initial Dali image that it came out with feels more like an alien than a human being. I notice I am most drawn to the mid-journey version. I think the strong blurred background effect really draws the eye in. It gives it this cinematic feel. The ideogram version has very intense perspective and colors. And then the updated Dali version certainly improves the the aesthetic and gives you something completely different. So I would say the most realistic rendering comes from Mid Journey, followed by Ideogram, followed by Dali. Though Dali certainly works better if you know how to use it. Now we're going to take a look at illustrations next, fantasy style illustrations. And the prompt for this round was an awe-inspiring cinematic illustration of a mysterious cloaked wizard standing amidst a misty forest. So before we jump into this round, I thought I would tell you a little bit about why I have the experience and background to comment on these software. Well, I have a background in art and design. I've exhibited my arts in countries from London to Saudi Arabia, and I've worked as a designer and collaborated with global brands like GoDaddy, Ralph Lauren, 
the Sundance Film Festival, Barclays, and many more. I've run my own design studio for the last 10 years, and we've also sold uh, design templates to creatives. So we've been creating tools and templates for other designers to work more effectively. This was way back when I had to make everything by hand. You ever seen a man draw? It's where he takes a stick and he rubs it on a piece of paper. Oh dear. Yeah, I used to create some one-line drawings. It was one of my uh, styles as an artist. So let's get back to our prompt battle. And now we're on to illustration. And we're gonna walk through the different images. First up, we have Ideogram. And it's got a really beautiful image, actually. I love the sense of story coming through in this, that we have the wizard looking at this mysterious castle. And he is actually in the moment of casting a spell directed towards this beautiful castle, which has some sort of event going on in the courtyard. The composition, the story, the colors are all excellently executed and there is nothing anatomically or physically incorrect. Next up we have Midjourney and it has uh, yeah a really different atmosphere that's come out in the image. Like if you just notice how you feel looking at this image compared to this image. This is so much more dark, intense, boding and this is slightly more uh, adventurous and light-hearted. It certainly for me gives a a little bit more of a feel of Lord of the Rings and perhaps the Fellowship of the Ring where they're visiting the uh, elven town. It reminds me a little bit of Rivendell, especially the almost uh, spring-like tones coming through. Now we'll finally look at the Dali version. And again, there is something else that is quite consistent with Dali images is that when you have buildings, you have a lot of intense spiky spires. Now, one thing that we had in the prompt was to summon a mighty meteor, and it looks as if Ideogram has done this, Midjourney has not done this, and Dali has done it very accurately. Like, that is certainly a meteor. There's no doubt about it. Whereas Ideogram, you're like, oh, yeah, th that could pass for a meteor. I could see how that's happening. But uh, Midjourney, I mean, unless this is like a very, very faded meteor slowly coming into shot, it has not adhered to the prompt there. So one thing to bear in mind is that ideograms, prompt adherence, is extremely high. Dali's is effective and Midjourney's is a little bit lacking. So we take a look at these more closely together. And once again, ideogram and Dali has gone for an extremely similar color palette. There is a lot more detail in the ideogram image. If you see that a lot of the elements inside of Dali look very repetitive. It's almost a symmetrical border from these trees, three trees on each side with very similar styles, which gives it a little bit of balance, but almost a feeling of there was less intent placed on it. It was like, okay, we'll just repeat it on the other side. Uh, Midjourney uh, offers a real contrasting aesthetic, but it has not adhered to the prompt as closely. So I'd say there are strengths and weaknesses to each of these. I would say that the aesthetic is more mature in the mid-journey image. The prompt adherence is best in Dali. And I would say that the detail is clearest in Ideogram. Especially, I love the, the frayed elements to this wizard's cloak. It's a, it's a really beautiful extra detail that they've added in there. It adds like a real rawness and personality to this wizard. Next up, we're going to be looking at a dynamic action shot of a Mercedes. And the prompt is a high performance Mercedes AMG on the Le Mans circuit. So first up we have Ideogram and I really like the, the drama of the piece, especially these flying elements coming from the side here of this. There must be leaves. It's not quite clear what they are. It's clear that it has picked up on the leaves and dust from the prompt and added those in for a real element of motion and dynamism. However, I'd say the, the man's face He's got an extraordinarily large nose. Hello, <laughs> my name's Mr. Beaknose. And it's rendered the logo of the Mercedes very well and accurately. And we, if we move on to the mid-journey version, it certainly looks like a shot from an advertising scene. I, I like the blurred nature of the elements apart from the car, that it has this, yeah, this very beautiful effect of blurring everything apart from the car, which is in focus, which really leads your eye into the car. Perhaps the colors are almost too restricted here in this mid-journey edition. It's really just uh, yellow tones. There is no contrasting colors. If we look at the ideogram version, it's a more realistic, though I find the, the airbrushing effect on the metal of the car seems a little bit too much, a little bit too intense. And also the 
perspective is accentuated and rotated. So it's not a level image. It's quite interesting that they've done this in the ideogram version. So this would be like a level photo with the horizon flat, but it hasn't. It's given us this, this leaning effect, which I find to be slightly disorientating and nausea inducing, but it does add that sense of motion and dynamism to the piece. They also did this, curiously, on the earlier photo of the dog surfing. Yeah, Image Journey has done it a little bit, but it does feel like there is a, a more stable nature to the image. And finally, we have the Dali image. And I would say, yeah, the again, the strength of the Dali image is with the mist and the dust coming up. It hasn't quite got the composition right because it hasn't included the driver. And if we take a look at all of these together, I would say that, again, Ideogram and Midjourney are out in front with different strengths. Midjourney certainly has a more cinematic, refined style, and Ideogram has more of an intense, dynamic approach. The Dali image seems to me to be a little bit childish and overly intense, lacking nuance and more intelligent composition. Now we'll move on to a slightly more childish type of illustration, uh, 3D and playful. And this is where we might expect Dali to do a bit better, as that really plays the strengths of the styles that are effective in Dali. I'll read you the prompt, or the first part of the prompt at least. A captivating illustration of a playful student enjoying a vibrant outdoor playground. So the ideogram has produced us a very interesting, lively image. Whimsical and playful, uh, bountiful and full of life. Nice composition. Uh, it selected a good moment within the timeline of this child going down the slide to put them right in the middle, of the peak moment of enjoyment. Though I don't quite understand why it's put a block where he's going to land. That's a little bit evil. Now we look at Midjourney. The Midjourney version has got a few distortions in it, actually. You can see that the, the face is not rendered particularly clearly with the nose having an unusual line across it. And also, I would say maybe this hand is missing, or it's not very clear exactly where this hand is. And something about the toes look very flat here. And if we take a look at the Dali version, uh, so very intense colors, a very different layout and style. But I, I like the trees, the style of these trees are fairly interesting. The child looks less engaging. I would say I'm less curious about the character of the child in this one for the character design compared to the other two. So let's take a closer look at all of these together. I certainly would say that the character design of the child in Midjourney and Ideogram are much more engaging. They're, they really feel like real people that I want to understand more of. Like, why are they there? Why have they not put their backpacks on the ground? Because I asked them to have a child with a backpack, probably. Bull. Yeah, the joyful expression is really coming through on both of these characters. I like the stylized trees that Ideogram has created. These abstract bubble trees are very beautiful. So again, you can see that Ideogram and Dali have really saturated images, very high intensity in their contrast and dynamic ranges. Uh, Midjourney has a more subtle, subdued color palette. The physics of the Ideogram image is probably the best, apart from this block blocking the poor child. And Dali has come out with a very different approach, really very unusual. Now, one area that Ideogram claims to be heads and shoulders above the competition is in effective text rendering. And in this round, we're going to put that to the test. I spent some time exploring in Midjourney version 6 its font rendering capabilities, its ability to render text effectively. And I was able to create a number of working usable fonts using Midjourney. And I even made a course on this entire process. If you're interested, I'll leave a discount coupon for everyone watching this video in the description below. And so I wanted to put that process to the test in both Dali and Ideogram. And the prompt was a font, and then with the alphabet, and then children's quirky, cute, black and white, full alphabet, small, flat, duo tone. And this is the Ideogram version that came out. And I have to say, this is pretty impressive font design. First of all, it's almost got the entire alphabet correctly in. It's only got a few letters incorrect or rendered in a nonsensical way. For example, this is a mystery letter, and this is a mystery letter here. This looks more like a little garland to wear on your shirt. Now, it's also made the mistake of giving us different color styles within the same font. So this would make it more complicated to render out. Now, this was the mid-journey version that I got, and it did 
We're very well at creating a usable font design. However, the issue was it really struggled to get the entire alphabet out. It only got about half of the letters. But for the actual quality of the individual character designs, it is uh, beautiful. Now, finally, the Dali version didn't quite understand that we were looking for a font design. Yeah, but the letters it has designed are interesting, aesthetic, and this really does give a good basis for a font design. I really appreciate the the playfulness of this R and also the extra l leg coming out of the W. So I think it, they're very beautiful letter forms, but it hasn't quite adhered to the exact text that I was looking for. I would say that Ideogram has followed most closely the text adherence, actually getting closest to the full alphabet. I would say that Midjourney has given us the most usable font design, letter design, that there is the most consistency between the characters in the Midjourney version. Though aesthetically, I really like the style of the letters coming out of Dali. I, I think they're particularly original and unusual and would really work well for a font. The issue is though, this is a lot more work to use this to build out a font. So these letters coming out of Midjourney are exceptionally good for creating a font straight away because we have very clear differentiation from the letter to the background and there's a nice amount of spacing in between. Whereas this is a little bit of an issue with the ideogram version and they've also colored different letters in different styles. And then also the Dali version, they've grouped letters completely together and put them on this almost sticker-like background. Now we'll take a look at a surreal anthropomorphic challenge where we'll take a stunning cinematic image of futuristic cyberpunk bunny. This is the ideogram version. <laughs> you can see that he's eating at bunny bow and the menu has the bunny bow logo etched across it. I like the intensity coming through from this character and the blue and pink cyberpunk style is working well. Next up we have Mid Journey and oh yeah wow. It's like I like this and then I look at the Mid Journey version I'm like ha huh, okay well there's something that suddenly touches me a little bit differently about it. It's like this is this is okay this is good uh, but Mid Journey for some reason it just understands taste more effectively. And looking at the Dali image we have again really high intensity saturation and a fully focused image with the whole image really in focus, which somehow detracts from the overall experience of the image. I do appreciate the steam coming off of his little plate of food, and he does look very interested in whatever he's reading on the computer. Though it's a real sense that that that's an engaging TikTok video he's got going on there. So looking at them all together, I most appreciate the version coming out of Mid Journey. For some reason, the realism comes through a lot stronger here, especially with the rendering of the fur and the whiskers on his little face. I appreciate the intense expression from coming out of Ideogram and the more playful nature coming out of Dali. Next up, we're going to look at rendering products. And for this, we have used the prompt, a stunning 3D render of futuristic women's shoes designed for exploring otherworldly terrains. First up, we have Ideogram, it's got a reasonable pair of shoes. I appreciate the colors and also the reflections coming off the neon lights of the shoe onto the rocks. After this, we have Mid Journey, and I would say that it has not particularly understood the nature of what we were looking for here. And the style is quite intense and flat rather than realistic. After that, the Dali version has a nice set of shoes. It certainly has the product photography style down. And another telltale sign of Dali is that it has often got this vignette effect on all of its images where the corners are much darker than the center of the image. I like how there's almost a little face coming out of the Dali shoes here with a smile on the two eyes. This is a nice touch. Which of these would I actually wear? I'd probably wear the Ideogram ones first, then the Dali versions. And the mid journey ones look more like some sort of cowboy boot crossed with a futuristic shoe. And I like that the style and the reflections on the materials of Ideogram. I'm really getting a, a very good sense of the different features of the material used on the webbing on top compared to the under layer. Now, if we take a look at the next design, and it's a tarot card illustration. And for Ideogram, we have, yeah, uh, a beautiful illustration. I appreciate the subtle floral details. They do have a little bit of a watermark added in here of a artist's signature, which I don't appreciate. I think 
this should not be in there. You should add this yourself because obviously if you want to use this, you're going to have to edit that out. And it looks like the person's name was Jonorge. The skeleton's fingers are not rendered particularly anatomically correctly. And for some reason, there is a gap here of the grass not being colored in correctly. I also think that the text rendering, if they're going to put text in, it needs to say something. One, that makes sense. And two, that uses a consistent font style. And you can see here that the word starts off particularly reasonable and it deteriorates at the end. Next up with the mid-journey version, I appreciate again the floral elements are illustrated uh, accurately and, and with a nice set of both consistency within the different elements and variety. So not one of these flowers looks the same, yet they all fit together in harmony. Again, we have the same issue with the text rendering. Oh, I have to say it looks as if his hand has been rendered more anatomically correctly. Finally, we have the Dali version, and this is actually very impressive. There is a coherence to the style and something more in line of how I would imagine a tarot card to be rendered. I like the both the floral elements and the composition. There is a nice balance here in the Dali version. To the composition, I actually appreciate the way that they have mirrored the effects on the left and right hand side. And it works really well in this situation for an illustrative card. And the skeleton has a, yeah, a quite a sincere and humble posture of real intrigue into the book. And the skeleton looks fairly anatomically correct. And I certainly think it's performed very well here. So for me, in this round, actually, Dali is a clear winner. And that's possibly the only round that I would say Dali has absolutely knocked the other two out of the park. It also hasn't made the same error of adding in nonsensical text. It actually hasn't had it in any text. Apart from this, it's more of a pictogram rather than a piece of nonsensical text. So it actually makes a more usable design. And looking at them together, I, I do appreciate the graphic nature to the Dali card. I like the, the details and the subtlety to the floral elements of videogram and the slightly more intense, morbid feel coming out of mid journey. So to summarize the findings from the prompt battle between these three, I would say that me and Ideogram provide the most photorealistic images with mid journey providing a slightly more cinematic, tasteful and curated experience. It's almost as if you're looking at the world through the eyes of a talented director and photographer. It adds in that sense. Whereas Ideogram gives you a slightly more, should we say, dynamic, wild interpretation of the world. That's, I would say, more realistic to what you actually see, but it gives you less visually interesting images. For actual human renderings, I would say that Ideogram and Midjourney present uh, very beautiful effects, but Midjourney has this, uh, this director's eye, the cinemagraphic approach, whereas Ideogram gives you something that's uh, a little bit more with a, a moodiness to it this uh, subtlety that almost becomes a little bit painted. And Dali will give you the most over-intense aliens, if that's what you're looking for. Everyone has their own fetish, each to their own. But Dali, if you understand its weaknesses, you can actually tell it to counteract those. So it has an inbuilt stylistic intent to create highly stylized images, but this can be undone with effective prompting. Each one of these is starting to perform very well with text, uh, but Ideogram has the best prompt adherence. And I think we're seeing that consistently, that Ideogram and Dali have the best ability to understand relational and complex prompts. So if you're looking to create very specific scenes or continuous elements, then they are working best. However, one thing to bear in mind is that none of these platforms are presenting effective ways for creating consistent characters. And for that, you'll have to look elsewhere. I think that is something they will all be looking to perform more effectively at in future, as it's one of the most requested features from the AI art community. Now, Dali has performed particularly well in graphic and illustrated situations, and especially if you're creating posters or repeating elements inside of your work. Now, we'll do a little speed test and see how each of these compares. We're going to enter in the same prompt to each, and we're going to run them all simultaneously on screen to see which one comes up fastest. Man wearing a pink hat is sitting on a blue chair on top of a purple whale. On the left is a 
dinosaur, and on the right is a pineapple. And they are off, ladies and gentlemen. This is three titans of the game locking horns in a race to the finish. And it looks like Ideogram is taking an early lead whilst Midjourney has made some progress. And there it is. Ideogram is first, Dali second. And coming up in the rear in third place is Midjourney in 34 seconds. So there we have it. There are the results of the speed test. Now let's just take a look at how well these each performed with understanding the relational prompt. So Ideogram has understood the prompt effectively on every single edition. It has all of these elements in the correct places. And if we look at Dali, you can see it has also performed well on this front. And the other thing to note is that Dali only gives us one image at a time. Whereas Midjourney has, it has also done pretty well. I would say that one of the images he has not got the chair on top of the dinosaur. But for this relational prompt, it has done pretty well. Apart from sometimes it's getting the pineapple in the wrong place and the dinosaur too. So you would say that for relational complex prompt adherence that Ideogram and Dali are ahead of Midjourney. Now let's talk a little bit about restrictions that Dali is a pretty woke and tame AI art generator that does not allow you to have much fun by creating famous people or using the styles of other artists or of creating NSFW works. Midjourney is slightly more lenient and allows you to use styles from artists. It allows you to create the likeness of famous people, but not all famous people. You cannot create images of Xi Jinping and it doesn't give you so much leeway with NSFW type content, more salacious images of the female anatomy. Ha! 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 Whereas our new friend Ideogram gives us a little bit more leniency with creating NSFW content. It, I would say that it allows a little bit more skin to come through, but it does have a limitation that if you start going too far, it will tell you, no, you've been a very naughty boy. This is not safe. And it will come up with a little image that says naughty content. But you can get away with, I would say, things that are more provocative up to a limit. Now, we'll talk a little bit about pricing that all of these plans offer, I would say, quite comparable options for their unlimited versions. And the unlimited monthly pricing is $20 for Ideogram and Dali 3 and $30 for Midjourney. However, Dali 3 comes with ChatGPT Plus, so you get both ChatGPT Plus and Dali 3, which is a pretty good deal. And for Ideogram, you get unlimited amount of relaxed generations and Midjourney also with their standard plan you get an unlimited amount of relaxed generations which means you can create as many images as you want but they are slightly slower. I've gone ahead and bought a subscription for all of these and about a hundred thousand other AI tools so <laughs> if you uh, would like to support the channel why not look at the subscribe button down here I, you see it over there yeah, i don't ask people to subscribe i just mentioned that there's a subscribe button that exists somewhere near this video it's somewhere around here and if it ever called upon you, you could bestow upon me the honor of your subscription. So a little bit of fun just to take a look at some of the things that you can do with Ideogram that I like is that you can create memes and you can ask it to create memes. So I asked it to create a meme about British men and it said, when you realize a British man in a, a meme, computer, hilarity. And then next up it had British man. No, I'm not cold. I'm British. This uh, resonates with me quite deeply. I certainly... I can handle the cold, I can't handle the heat. I'm here currently in Indonesia and I am sweating one out consistently. And I'm literally not built for the tropics, but I love it. Then the next one is, when you tell a British man, the, the weather is normal. And then when British men discuss the latest fashion trends, well, I say I do like the color burgundy, khaki green. Khaki green is so in right now. Then I asked it to do the same for Americans and it came out with these, it seems like Americans are obsessed with cheeseburgers, barbecues, and beer. When you've mastered the art of the perfect barbecue. A lot of fun here. And finally, then I asked it to do one about AI art. And these were actually fairly decent. Uh, my AI art is better than yours. <laughs> I liked this. And also, the, when you realize AI art is taking over the meme world. And I suppose this is a nod to the future. So to summarize, I would say that Midjourney is... It's like the arrogant French man who knows best at everything. It has the best taste and it looks down upon everyone else because it simply 
understands the reality of style. You cannot teach style, you're born with it. I would say Dali is this wide-eyed, woke child that is obsessed with bright and shiny things and has yet to develop and mature. Dali! Ooh. And Midjourney is more like, oh, I know what is the best. It is uh, very particular. You do not understand. And Ideogram is like, new kid on the block. Hit the f shit. Thank you very much for watching. And I appreciate you being here. If you'd like to watch more videos on AI, why not watch this one next and follow me down the AI rabbit hole. And if you'd like to take one of my courses, do check out the links in the description below. I particularly recommend the latest course on creating and designing fonts with AI. And if you're interested, I am creating a new course on Ideogram. And if you want to be updated as soon as that comes out, where I'll also offer a huge discount to my email subscribers, then make sure to subscribe to my email newsletter in the description below. And I don't ask people to subscribe. I just mention that there is a subscribe button existing somewhere over there. And if it ever took your fancy, it would be an honor to have you join the channel. And if you're open to leaving me any feedback to this video. I really appreciate uh, constructive feedback on my videos. What did you like? What did you really enjoy? What would you like to see more of? And what did you learn? Or what was most interesting to you? Or all these thoughts are really very welcome and they really help me try to improve this channel and my own self for you and for me and for the world and for AI art. And apart from that, thanks for being here. And most of all, I wish you a delightful, Dave.